I was dealing with somebody big time in here. You need to forget. You know what it says in more scripture when we're going over a little further? If you don't forgive, you know what he said he'll do? I'll turn you over to the demons. Oh, no. That's what his word said. He'll turn you over to the torments. And that's the truth. You see, we don't like to hear that kind of preaching. We want to bless us and we want to get you a new Cadillac. We want to get you a new $3 million home. Folks, this thing's real. I believe there's people sitting in churches all over America and around the world. The only way they're going to get to heaven is go through the great tribulation, get their heads cut off to go to heaven. And they're claiming Jesus. And they're going, Halalamashandorobokushanga. I know people that are filled with God's spirit. They speak the word of God. Listen to me. And they're so full of doubt and unbelief that it just breaks my heart when I see people with such a holy anointing. And they're not allowing God to purge them and get the garbage out of their life. Buddy, I'll tell you what, he's took the roller rooter, and I've told you that a million times here before. He's took that thing down in me and rolled around and around, and all that garbage he's bringing up and bringing up and bringing up and getting it out of the way. And he needs to do that to you too. Amen. Sometimes we're so selfish, we're critical, and we're judgmental. We judge one another. And God says, don't you judge. You judge not, lest you he judge. You know what, there's a lot of people in the body of Christ that they have a lot of problems. They really, really are. And they need to be set free. We all need to be set free. But I'm telling you, there's people that are hiding things in their life that they think their parents don't know about it. They think their husband don't know about it. They think their wife don't know about it. They're making ears if they don't know about what you're doing. God knows everything's naked and undone in the eyes of God. God wants to recognize that we don't belong to ourselves. Once we're born again, We've been paid for, and there's a price to pay to follow Jesus. To really walk like Him. To really talk like Him. As I shared with you this morning, the Apostle Paul said, It's no longer I that live. It's not me anymore. But it's Christ living in and through my life. You know what? He wants to fill us so full of His glory and His power and His presence that wherever we go, just like Peter, the shadow of Peter healed people, delivered people, set people free. God wants you and I to be the same way. Jesus wants to manifest Himself through you and me in such a way that would blow you and me away. He's an awesome God. And He's calling out to His body. Do you smell the water? It's down inside. If you're born again, you've got God's Spirit in you. There's a river down in there. This is a river of life in here. This is a river of life down in here. And it's flowing. It's flowing. The power and the presence of God is so prevalent in this place tonight. It's awesome. But are we ready? Donna was telling us a while ago, are you really ready to meet the Lord? Or do you have things in your life that displeases you and God? If you do have those things in your life, God says, I want to take them from you tonight if you'll just give them to me. Will you give them to me? Will you give them to me? There's bondages. There's things that people are bound by. The devil's blinded them and deafened them. And they don't know whether they're coming or going. And the Holy Spirit says, there's only one way to go, and that's Jesus. He's the one to set us free. No matter what's going on in our lives, no matter if we're chained down in bondages of sin, I'm here, the Bible says this, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing is here. And it's destroying yokes in this place tonight by the Spirit of the living God. You don't have to have a man touch you. The Holy Spirit is touching you tonight. Amen. Setting you free. Because he's an awesome God. And he said, I'm coming back, and I'm coming so very soon. You know, you've heard all of us preach it. Pastor Thomas preached it. Jesus is really coming again. Make wrong choices and wrong decisions. And we pay for them. Dearly. We pay for them. And I'm just so grateful tonight that you're here, and I'm here, and the Holy Ghost is here, and the water is flowing. I said it's flowing. Amen. Matthew chapter 18. You see them Bibles. Oh man, it looks so good. Pastor Tom, you trained them well. So, let's read. Verse. 21, Matthew 18, 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, 
How oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which take account of his servant, servants. And when he had begun to reckon one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, I have patience with me, and I will repay thee all. Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him of his debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what thou owest. Huh. Have you ever got him somebody that you owe money to? Did ever come and run your neck and you better pay me? All right, you're still alive, so they haven't done that. <laughs> and his fellow servant fell down on his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servant saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto the Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, he said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Should, should not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, or he was angry, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also, watch it, say unto you, unto you, not everyone his brother, their trash, if we don't forgive our brother, our trespasses. God says, I'm going to turn you over to the demon. A loving Father would do that? That's what his word says. See, we don't want to hear that kind of stuff. We've got to forgive. We have to forgive. And forget. A lot of people listen. When God begins to deal with them, and he allows his mercy and his grace to touch your heart, and, and the Spirit of God is here touching hearts tonight, and he did this morning. There's forgiveness in Jesus. 